Oh baby. Oh baby, oh baby. I know you guys are ready for us. Hot, hot marketing. So th this is the um well, let me let me adjust myself. Not like that. This is the uh, sick marketing demo where you get to uh, ex recreate the experience of E3. Can't wait. I wonder if they had to like get the rights to the LA Convention Center. Oh, oh, it's a little sensitive though. Forgot that I got that gamer aim on. I actually need to practice that a little bit. My FPS posture. I think that involves throwing my keyboard out and up a little bit and then hold on. I've been I've been going back to the drawing board, my gamer technique lately, trying to figure out if there's like ways that I can actually improve it. How was egg? I actually didn't eat egg. I ate uh, popcorn instead, which is a whole grain snack. Actually quite good for you. Well, good is a relative term, but it provides uh, slow digesting, good kind of carbohydrates. All right, it's coming in here to lower sensitivity, if that's a thing I can do. It doesn't appear to be. Okay, well. Sorry. Move that. Put a little cinnamon or sugar on it, and it's an all-day snack. Oh, just like a kernel here and there. Alright, well, let me want me to lower my DPI then. I'll take the coward's way out. Ooh. I gotta steal a badge. It's not E3 unless there's a some illicit activities just outside the door to get a badge. They've been they've been ratcheting down on that a lot though. Of like uh now you have to like have an ID that matches the name on your badge and there's like uh checkpoints everywhere. <clears throat> nope. I hacked it. You get steam achievements for this, hell yeah. Finally, I can get rewarded for being marketed to, like I so richly deserve. Here's the deal, if I watch something on YouTube, and somebody gets some ad revenue from that, that's my eyeballs generating that revenue. Why don't I get a little cut of that? The convention center is now closed. Please leave via the nearest exit. What's up, little guy? I had to do it. I had to. Actually, I'm curious what, what it's gonna do. Okay. That's some impressive audio work, though. For, uh... I guess it's gonna be fascinating to see, um... Uh, like... The degree of, of production value of this, given that it is a... Like, I'm sure some people could have theory, theory crafted that eventually they would make playable demos that are just meta events. Or digital marketing events. Like, we're certainly on the cusp of that happening. They're kind of the, as far as I know, the first ones to really go for it. So I'll be curious to see where the bar is set. But there I go, talking about marketing like it's it's like it's a, a self-serving and, and... What's the word? Like something that exists unto its own right. This is where a, uh, you get the shirt cannon? Fuck yeah. This is usually where, um, there's like a cafe or something. You can buy instant coffee. That's not good. Wait in line a long time to do it. If you're, uh, if you're a real ace pro, you can get a place to sit, which means you will spend the rest of the day there. In addition to spreading everything you own into the space around you to make sure nobody else can sit anywhere. So let's see here. South Hall would be this way. Is the, I guess the West Hall open? You're telling me Devolver doesn't have booths in both halls? Maybe not. Okay, they're telling you that's where the upgrades are. Reminder. The convention center is now closed. Oh, Akiva, that's a good point. The one demo disc they played with the game hub? Yeah, the like the Windows it was like the Windows 95 sampler 
where you're on a space station and you walk to different areas to launch demos? Yeah! Although, I, I don't know for sure that this has playable demos inside of it. Um, I don't think it was big enough, too. Or maybe it was. <laughs> like the thing is there's there's solid game design here the way that the way that the enemies activated the way they queue on the ground where they're going to to land the like puzzle nature of getting the gun and then using it to solve a puzzle like this this wasn't it wasn't made by marketers so they contracted somebody to make this and i'm wondering who it was Although it's, it might be in the, it might just be in the info page on Steam or something like that. I didn't look to see uh, who the credited developer was. Security areas are off limits to attendees. This is really cool, though. There's, this this game already has a vibe of like, I don't know. There's there's something interesting about exploring an abandoned structure, because I feel like in the same way within the lore, you find the remnants of what was there. Uh, like, you you find passes that have been left by people and stuff like that. That's the lore of the game, but also, it feels like it matches so much more the dynamic between the developer and the player. Of, like, the developer went through and made this world for you to explore, and they left notes everywhere. So it's, I guess it's one of the weird ways in that fourth dimensionally the ludonarrative dissonance breaks down for a second. Um, or rather that, in a weird way, you are doing exactly what your character is doing. Your motivations are the same. And, like, they give you a shortcut back. Flying Wild Hog, Hog made this as well. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Hmm. That's cool. Um, <laughs> this is not what this looks like. Um, although it's awfully, it's awfully dramatic. Um, I can't think of a lot of other examples of that happening. Where a publisher commissions a, uh, a marketing work product from a, pu from a developing partner. I feel like that, that speaks to a healthy relationship more than anything else. When, like, money can flow both ways and work product can flow both ways. This is really cute. I guess they got some, uh, some, uh, some boost from NVIDIA, too. That helps. What? Unannounced game one? Are they putting, like, are they putting big secrets in here? Imagine, I mean, that's that's kind of literally what they said, is is turning marketing into the product, so... For the gamers, if you gotta get all the secrets, you are working for the right to be marketed to. <laughs> to have... To get a sneak peek at an unreleased game. It was always fun when publishers put... Or, sorry, developers would put that stuff in their games, but that doesn't happen so much anymore. Like, little, uh, little forward-looking Easter eggs. Maybe that's what made that one thing in Witcher 3 so so special. When like Siri sort of calls out Cyberpunk. I feel like that used to happen. Games would say, here's what we're working on next. Like even in software did that. Some of like the shareware would have for uh, I think of Doom would have stuff about Quake on it. And it's funny because the uh, the definition or the the early descriptions of what Quake would be, not what it ended up being. It was supposed to be like an RPG with stats and a party. You running around a big 3D world. And then it just turned into 3D Doom. I mean, but Cthulhu instead of instead of demons. Let's play Weird West Booth. Okay, we're carrying it. Carrying Booth. There's one thing I love, it's the like the weird dick measuring contest oh my god it is like it's like literally like a haunted house ah there are a lot of e3 booths that have like miniature haunted house uh sequences that are fun to walk through and that's kind of also the commentary of like 
the marketing has become a product unto itself. Like, people want to go through stuff just to, like, go through a spooky experience. Resident Evil 7 had a really cool one. You were, like, in the house. Like, oh, Doom was supposed to be an Aliens game? Yeah. There's, a uh, Warcraft, I think, was supposed to be a Warhammer game. Okay, so, it's not playable. That would, that would be, that would be a lot. To not only get, like, fully functioning... Holy shit. Is this actually a boss? No, it's just there, okay. Uh, to have, like, a fully functioning demo, for one, is hard enough. And then to have it run, like, game within a game, and have it not break. Not only itself, but not break everything else, too. Mm. I can see why that's, that's a lot. Hidden secret acquired. Look at big screen. All right. Oh, are you serious? Holy shit. Is it a trailer? It's got to be a trailer, right? It's the trailer. Okay. <laughs> 100 gigabyte marketing tool. You, you must be referring to Call of Duty Warzone. Or right, Fortnite, I guess. I'll say that. Oh, thank you, Chris. Has this been happening a lot? Sorry, I wasn't... Chris, I'm glad you're here. Because I, uh, I haven't been keeping an eye on chat, unfortunately. I just showed up. Okay. This does look really cool. Maybe I'll get an achievement for watching the whole trailer. Perhaps the game detects applause. Yes, hooray, Devolver. I celebrate your marketing attempts. Please shower me with achievements. Okay. Actually... Hell yeah. Hell yeah! Never been prouder to be a gamer. Got a goddamn achievement for watching a trailer. I do like, um... If there's one thing I do like, it's like logo treatments. I like the intersection of like, uh... Shapes, colors, designs, and patterns, and then like trying to convey meaning and, and emotion. It's like... So anyway, I, uh, I'm really enjoying these, like, fake boots. Also, there's like... There's something... There's gonna be something very cool about the fact that we can, like... Ha ha ha! Random bags on the floor. Uh, people can imagine spaces that they don't have to build. I feel like that liberates you so much in terms of just, like, you don't... There's none of the logistics of actually making this. You can just think about it and make it. As long as you're good enough at the digital tools. Why do we describe Weird West as an action RPG? Some would actually refer to the game as an immersive setting. There are many elements that set Weird West apart from any other action RPG out there, and I would love to show you... Is that Raph playing... I think it is. Gotta go to work. Good luck in your marketing adventure. Thank you, Signified. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Feeling... Feeling strong and motivated and marketed to, specifically. Feeling valued as a consumer. Maybe even validated. Perhaps there's a gnawing consciousness in my mind that says my entire life is going to be wasted on the politics of consumption. Which seems effervescent, but then the company makes a big old thing just for little old me. And suddenly my value as a consumer seems, seems valid. <laughs> Sister just finished uni for fashion and if they couldn't have an actual show they did a similar thing. 
to this and had a digital space. That's awesome. Gosh, that rules. Do you think... Are we are we there yet? Holy Christ! My guy is cut. Um, do you think we're at the place where, like... Um, sorry, I'm loving this. This is like some Remedy vibes. What if we just put like a music video that had our goofy ass devs in it? That may not be Raph, Raphael, but it kind of looks like him. I think uh, if it is, we might have a contender for Alpha Gamer. Some Twin Peaks The Return vibes? Yeah! For sure, man. You nailed it. That's exactly what this is. This would play in Bang Bang Bar. While people are just like staring weirdly intensely at each other for three and a half minutes. Yeah, so like... Studios, and I'm here today. This, that's, that's this guy, right? This is Rafael Colantonio, creative director and president of Wolf Eye Studios. And I'm here today to tell you about our current game in development, Weird West. At its core, Weird West is an action RPG set in a fantasy reimagining of the Wild West. You play through the adventures of five heroes that have intertwined oh, but yeah, my, um, to unveil one of the my modern fashion of speculation. The West. Can you do like a digital fashion show and then have well, your like design talent get scouted by Epic RPG. to do like Some would actually refer to outfits for Fortnite? Sim. Is that a real thing? There are many elements Does that, that like career flow happen? Any other I guess you could put it into a portfolio love to show that could get you hired to be a character artist. That's awesome. That is like. That, that digital fashion can be a total career path. The oh, that's him? Is composed of co uh, found a pic on Google and he has that arcane tattoo so on his arm. Is like oh my god. Alright, well. It is in our DNA to let the players play their own way. Rafael Colantonio is, is, West is today's alpha gamer of the day. We'll say that at least. And many playthroughs. That's that's or awesome. Like combat or trickery or stealth. Or I like the look of this. Of that. Yeah. We'll enjoy it reminds me of like um the game offers in a system rich like some of the simulation. some of the design elements that were in Fallout 2. Some of the like uh, narratives you could go through in some direction. of the villages. The setting is Weird West, you guessed it. Okay. It's an opportunity for us to explore a genre that has been kept underground. And we're excited about bringing our own take on it. As far as the visuals, we're going for a mix of 3D with hand-drawn textures and common palettes that we think bring a unique style to the game. Southern California is awesome. We want our world to be instantly recognized. Desperados had a child with the Witcher. Mm. That is so important to the experience. Yeah, it's, it's always hard to communicate now, the reality of a of a environment how sim versus how dynamic it's it's experience while the game I think like a um, dishonored actually tried the best of being like hey here's a couple of possible playthroughs and let's point out all the things that could change along the way but that takes a lot of time and it's specific man it's it's requires a pretty big investment from the player let's say you kill one of these merchants while the other one escapes the survivor will throw a vendetta at you and chances are They'll ambush you later when you expect it the least. Huh. This participates to the feeling of a very tailored experience per player. Finally, one more thing I wanted to mention is that your actions are permanent in Weird West. While you may resurrect when killed, your companion won't resurrect if you did not have a chance to revive them on time. Huh. And whatever choices you've made will stay in the game. So, stealing shops and killing people have consequences you cannot discard by coming back in time with a simple game reload. We think it is a powerful way to give meaning to your actions and keep the tension high. 
It seems like a like it's world scale roguelike. And that's about I don't it, think he can be the alpha gamer because he's a dev. A Gamers yell at devs thinking they know how to make a game better than devs. Out, but we're keeping some of these for later. That's, I hope you enjoyed what you saw. I would choose to believe that that's not required for the gamer stereotype. I would choose to believe that. It does happen. Uh, unfortunately, frequently. This is Rafael Colantonio, creative director. And From those that I guess would would proudly and angrily uh, self self identify as gamers. So yeah, I don't know. I'd like to think that developers are also gamers. I would like to think that if there are if there are stratas of gamers, if you will, developers should be the highest level, right? I guess maybe not. No, meh. I would say I guess maybe. Ooh, we got hacks. Um, maybe the highest level is actually somebody that only consumes games such as myself. Because to, to make games, you have to stop playing games. And then on some meta level, actually getting anything accomplished in the real world is sort of anti-gamer. So I see where you're coming from. <laughs> but still, uh, we do depend on, on the gods to continue continue making our tools of conquest. So... They, they deserve a seat of honor somehow, you know? You know how to code, though? That's true. I just choose not to. <laughs> I wonder how long it would take me to de-rust coding in general. I feel like once you once you have the mindset, it's like riding a bike. But uh, I feel like the hardest part would just be configuring the uh, development environment. Like, back in the day, you had, like, a compiler and a linker. And... As long as you had the right libraries pointed to default paths and, and hit your includes, you could just start writing code, basically. You could have stuff spitting out to terminal, at least. Um, I have no idea how complicated it is now. Like, I used Visual Studio back in the day. And it was pretty good. What languages did you learn? C mostly C++ was, like, my, my core language. But for a computer science degree, basically took a semester of a lot of stuff. Um, did C, did Java, JavaScript, did COBOL a little bit, Assembler, oh, can you crouch in this game? It's even easier now because some devs just make new and better dev tools. Uh, you mean coding? Yeah, I remember it, it actually wasn't even back, like, ten years ago. Oh, you can slide, okay. Even back ten years ago, like... What is slide? Uh, it wasn't that hard to like get some OpenGL stuff up and up and running, like to just be in a box with WASD controls and mouse. Like you could get that going in maybe half day. Control and W. All right. Ah, got it. Dodge the lasers in the meeting rooms. Ooh. Oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. Figuring this out. Yeah, anime speed lines. That's how you know you're doing something cool. Oh. Oh, the Secret Service game? Yeah. I kind of miss... I miss burner games like that. Just ones that... Is this, is this the Mystic Toilet where Dr. Disrespect... <laughs> almost got banned? I don't know, I guess he did for a couple days. Hell yeah. I will look in everything. There might be secrets. Rawr. You're right, there is no toilet paper. People are self-cleaning at E3. That's the great thing. What the heck? It's impossible. No gamer could do this. Oh! Maybe you gotta jump. Oh! 
man, I don't know. Hmm. Nothing in the bathroom. Hmm. Brandon works at a place where they still use COBOL? Man. Is there a target on the other side? Yes, there is. Solid, solid looking. Look at that. Look. Look at how brilliant that was. Good moves. Yeah, what if I... Oh. Oh. Okay. So many companies still use COBOL for legacy systems and databases. Yeah. My understanding is like, you can, you, if you, there's some military contracts too, stuff, places like Lockheed that still run on some very old languages. So it's like, if you're the, if you're the like top 10 COBOL masters in the United States, you can basically ask for whatever you want. I don't know. Sometimes that is that is a legitimate career path. Just get really good at uh, at an old thing. Yeah, banks for sure. Knowing older stuff's how you get job security. That's a good point. Yeah, you can kind of work at your own pace, and people can press you, but you can just ignore them. What's COBOL? It's just an old programming language. Yeah, you can ask for whatever you want, provided that thing is not to stop working in COBOL. Shell is the new hotness. Less code doing more work. There's something just called Shell. That's a really that's a really confusing name for a language. Or is D just mean shell scripting in a given operating system? PowerShell? Is that a Windows thing? I get no wait, HyperShell is <laughs> Windows, I think. Windows is PowerShell, right? They, like, give credits for all the assets they used? Huh. Oh no, I didn't collect all the unannounced assets. Crap. I actually kind of want that. PowerShell's on Linux? Oh. Oh. Hmm. I guess it's not over yet. Ooh, I got puzzles. Hell yeah. You missed one before the laser section? Hmm. I wonder if I can go back. Nah, I won't worry about it. It's on the internet. My industry died. What should I do now? Ooh. Uh, become a Twitch streamer. Ooh. Scurrying like a rat. Phil. It's an it's infinite money. Yeah, pick up mixer. Now these these are these are uh, not helpful suggestions. Um, I don't know what a. Maybe there's a way that you can identify some skills or some some um, experience that you've racked up doing what you used to do. Find a way to cross that over with a new uh, with a new skill, new industry. Um, I guess what? Uh, oh, Kraken Hunter, you heading out? All right. Thank you for uh, thank you for watching. I like how the clouds are pixelated. Deep caverns. What um what industry did you used to be in? You are Faraday, a shipwreck captain. You followed his adventure to rescue his lost crewmen, leading them to a safe return to their homeland. Give me trailer. Studio from Kyoto, Japan. 
and Ooh. we invite you to take a sneak peek at the story, mechanics, work in TV and film, and mm. in your old new game, Oria. I was I was super lucky to oh, yeah. work in entertainment, but takes place in the land of to have built a following that is still like features, I can rooms, still directly reach. And rainforest top islands. Hmm. You are Faraday, a shipwreck captain. You follow his adventure to rescue his lost crewmen, leading them to a safe return to their homeland. Now, on his pursuit of salvation, Faraday is guided to an ancient harpoon of great power. It awakens ancient enemies who slumbered in the depths of Terrafage. This game does look really cool. Yeah, I don't know. I um, I feel really bad about uh, people in the entertainment business. Unpredictable as an because yeah, you will venture. I know directly of that, like five or six paying jobs that just evaporated. They were delayed and delayed, and now they're not even talked about. And I'm like, man, all these all these companies. They had people like E3 itself, man. There's a lot of production work and a lot of event staff that. Uh, Combat is at the forefront of money. Aaliyah, with visceral systems that challenge the way you think about space. You can dash and teleport using. Oh, outstanding! Thanks for gifting us up. And immediately face hand to hand. I haven't gift. I haven't thanked anybody from the uh, today. I was too busy watching trailers, but. Crafting and dining magic hats give you additional power, including dashing and wall jumping. Uh, Years of justice. I don't know if you're still around. Thank you for the cheer. And generating electricity. Oh, spirit grip. Thank you. Puzzles Three month long relief from the constant desertion by the responsible like counter actions to the ah, coronavirus. Yeah, that's what's really frustrating. Introduces a new character. People that actually just sucked it up and done the right thing. Mechanics. We could be opening right now. By Instead of it being worse than it's ever been, you will take down these bosses and be handsomely that's, rewarded. That's the real frustration. New areas to explore and new mechanics to unlock. To both cause the problem or do nothing to prevent the problem, and then also not really help. Hopefully, unemployment is uh, is still coming through, but I can understand if it's not. Um, if you're actually if you're having a really hard time, like a really really hard time, I can I can help out a little bit. I've been doing okay, so. Just hit me up, slide into my DMs or something like that. We've poured ourselves into. Will you lead Faraday, master the harpoon? But speaking of, allow me to continue the thanking people for giving me and much. Solve the mystery that's Mighty Cornholio, thanks for the prime. J J Bro, thanks for the the gift there. Chris, thanks for the prime. Evan Almighty, thank you for the sub. It's good to hear from you. We are Skeleton Crew Studio from Kyoto, Japan. And Give me those achievements. A sneak peek at the story. Uh, Killer Red Wagon, thanks for the sub. Grapus, thanks for the prime. New, new game Signified River. Uh, if you're having a great marketing experience. Oh, yeah. an adventure game. oh, you're going to basic training? Oh, man. Best of luck. A lost world, home to folded in creatures. Uh, an outstanding. Thanks for gifting a sub. Hopefully that uh that made this shit a little, Faraday, a a little less bad. You follow his adventure to rescue his lost. Friend. Yeah, it's it's real scary, um, and it didn't have to happen, but uh, it is, it is happening. So, I've been lucky enough to to be able to land on my feet when a, there's a lot of life disruption, but I've been very very lucky in that regard. I think it's just like waiting waiting for your breaks and then jumping on them when you can get them. Um, again, that's just that's so effervescent. But it's not good advice right now. This wasn't in the, uh, this wasn't in the conference. Blightbound, a cooperative dungeon crawler that tasks three heroes to venture down from their mountain refuge to Father Ange, the thanks for getting a couple of subs. Of the Blight, a mysterious and corrupting fog that enshrouds the land. Yeah, this looks really cool. Each player will choose a This reminds me, I gotta play Dragon's Crown. Classes. It's been stuck in my head lately. Forge Titan's might! Assassin. Let me at him. Or mage. My greatest power awaits. Battle of terror. I like that animation Ford style. Monstrous enemies and colossal bosses. It's like the heavily keyframed, like squishy, stretchy Each style. It reminds me of um, the Behemoth. The team to overcome like uh, Castle Crashers and stuff like that. Clever puzzles and synchronize their ultimate or no, it reminds me of like Clay, um, Mark of the Ninja. Battle through three I played Hades land. when it first hit early access, um, and I've been meaning to get back to it. I just haven't yet. Have you been finding all the secrets? No, I think I missed a few. Underhold, unfortunately. 
Steal your nerves and prepare once again to enter the Blight Warrior. This is such like an old school video game trailer too. Just nothing but dudes wrecking dudes. Just fools getting cut up. While some nar some narrator is like, you will go on an amazing adventure. Behold, Blightbound, a cooperative dungeon. Behold. Three heroes to venture down. Ah oh, man, video games are so sick. What did we do to deserve video games? Nothing. Nothing. We didn't do shit. Man, can't wait to go to Serious Sam 4 land. Looks like Darkest Dungeon? Ah, it's another game I need to play. Okay, I see. <laughs> need, need Super Glove. Can't get it yet. Uh, all right. Uh, tangerine cream. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the prime. Metric shadow. Thank you for the sub. Uh, just up to you for your offer to help someone in need. You give me faith in humanity. Well, thank you. That's kind of the opposite of what I was trying to do, but I'll take, I'll take your money. I'll take it. Uh, thank you for that. That's what scares me, is like... <laughs> that's creepy. Uh, that's kind of a new enemy. I don't remember those guys. Cool. So I'll watch that again. I'm looking for those hot secrets, though. Darkest Dungeon may steal a whole month of streaming if you let it. That's fine with me, man. Playing video games is a treasure. There's gotta be hot secrets around here. I can feel it. Or maybe I can't. I don't know. I thought I could feel it. This is my version of Pay It Forward? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I've never been very good about, uh... About leaning into, like, or asking people for... Yeah! There it is. Asking people for stuff. Which is all I should be doing now. I was an explorer once. Captain Sam Stone of the Surveyor. It was good. No. Right. It was awesome. Cool. Pay it tangentially. Yeah. The truth is, they don't care about who we get. I can lean into the pay it forward thing, but it always feels weird to me to like, well, I won't say anything. Captain Sam Stone of the Surveyor. It was good. Hell, it was awesome. In the final week of a six month full stack coding camp. It's intense, and while they do a lot of concepts and projects very quickly, you have to constantly be working and learning on things on your own. And even so, they don't expect you to be a fully formed developer by the end of the course, because it's definitely not the same as a four-year CS degree. You get a lot more practical experience and learning done in a much shorter time. Okay. That's pretty cool, Yar. Um, sounds like an awesome program. Sounds like a good place to start. I feel like if you go that path, and honestly, this is probably faster and cheaper than college, depending on your motivation level, but... If you do like a, a boot camp like that, um, just to get the get the real solid on the fundamentals, and then immediately start work, like working and learning on your own, and making demos and just building stuff, then I feel like yeah, you can have enough coding samples and projects to show to get a reasonable entry level job. Which are we looking forward more to? Cyberpunk or Blade Runner anime? I would say the cyberpunk anime. Because uh, Blade Runner, as a property even, and for the subjects that it tackles, has a tendency to be very depressing. Which is good. I like that from time to time. But uh, I feel like... I don't know. I feel like I don't want to be bummed out. I feel like Cyberpunk has a higher probability of, of maybe having some future dumb fun mixed in with maybe getting bummed out about some things. It's a cool booth though. Ah! 
I make it so you can just walk out of it. That's nice. Good, good moves. Also, imagine making an actual, like, big squishy booth that people have to climb into. That would be awesome. Like, ideas that people have surely had, but then get shot down because it's not safe or someone's going to die. Also, imagine hiring a bunch of... Or maybe having a bunch of little robots, like little pill boys, that just run around and bonk into stuff. I currently have two bootcamp graduates in my team, and boy, they need a lot of coaching. Yeah, Team Manfred? I could see, like... I could see having the skills, but not knowing how to be an autonomous worker yet. I don't know, is that... Is that maybe where where it's at? Because I feel like even in a boot camp setting, you still have a lot of, like, guidance, and people, like, sort of... You always have somebody that you can, like, ask, and that's kind of the setup, is that you can always check in with somebody, and you, you have a lot of resources to be, uh... Oof. That looks like that hurts. Whereas in a, on the job, you know, you you have your assignment, and then you're supposed to go do it. And, and, like, find the books you need, or... Just copy and paste from GitHub. So excited for this game? Yeah, I think this game will be really fun. I think it'll, like, it'll be... It'll be, like, Jackbox vibe, but maybe a little more, like, for, for my taste, a little more video gamey. Um... And not quite as, like, almost like Mario Party vibe, you know? Most of them have never had a real office job, and that's the big learning curve. Got it. That's interesting. How, well, I mean, forgive me for, for asking questions. I'm just, I'm really curious about that. Like, how does that manifest? Like, they don't know office etiquette? They like microwave and fish or something? Oh, wait, I didn't. Oh, there's a trailer. Oh, that's right. I got to play this at uh, E3 last year, and it was really, really fun. Oh yeah, King Egg. Yeah, the US is a, is a real fun place. You gotta pay for everything, everything. That's okay though, no taxes, so everyone can afford college. We just cut taxes by a little bit. Oh, 40k is probably lowballing it. Oh, for a college education? For like a four-year degree? My tuition in 2000, like six, was I think 8k a semester. But oh, that's cute. Oh, look at him. Oh. Um, I had a, I had a spawn or I had a uh, I had a full sponsorship. Maybe because of my SAT scores or something, or that I was into tech. I don't know. Like, I feel like I feel like uh, like in 2002, it was still a little too late to be given a white dude a full a full ride for tech shit, but they did. Uh, so I took it, which is pretty sick. So all I had to do was basically cover my um my apartment and living expense, which is possible but uncomfortable on on like one one step above minimum wage, which is basically where I was at. I was doing like food and retail work. So, I got, a look, I got a lot of lucky breaks. The system benefited me in that circumstance to a big degree. Oh! <laughs> Luigi, thanks for the sub. Yeah, being a nerd. Being a nerd paid off. I skipped with my BA and MA with only 30k. It's not too bad. It's possible. In the current system, it's possible to do it, but boy, did they stack all the odds against everyone. Like, it's possible to do it, but I think it requires a level of, like, fisc... It requires, like, fiscal responsibility. And, like financial savvy that an 18 year old's just not gonna have it's really unfair it's it's a bunch of like 40 year old dudes being like i did I, I was able to manage it and like no you didn't man they weren't out trying to trying to stab your ass back then they are now that's it sucks it's not ugh. 
Like, I, part of me is, would, would like to think that parents could help out and, like, try and not only subsidize the cost of living during college, but, like, try and keep kids from signing away their futures, but, man, who knows. Clearly, clearly it didn't work out. Beyonce is getting a free ride through grad school? That's awesome. Hell yeah. You're expected to know what you want to do with the rest of your life by the age of 18 because your damn college is just too expensive. Yeah, yeah. At 18, you have to get in so much financial debt that God, if you don't, like, you're, you're under somebody's thumb right away. You have to, uh, you have to finish your degree and you have to convert that into money to pay the debt back. So it's like, at 18, you make a decision that if you do everything right and your mind doesn't change and you don't learn and you don't grow and you stay exactly the same, maybe the effects of that that decision are over by age 26. Maybe 28. But like, fuck me, man. Signing up or asking somebody to go into that kind of severe debt, it just changes the way they think about everything. Then it just, it like... It burdens you to pursue the highest paying job you possibly can. I don't... I don't know. That was the Devolver fanboy? <laughs> so me. I'm, I'm the gremlin. Thoughts on joining the military at 22? I'm not... I don't know. I, I, I know very little about that. Um, I'd like to believe it's a viable path. I don't think it should, like, it shouldn't be like that. Well, howdy, stranger. Ah! Wang, where are you? Can you hear I me? will hey. have to make an absurd That's salary just to afford friends. living on my own. I'm living with my mom and I always will be. 4000 for a one-room basement apartment isn't viable or worth it. Are you in, are you in, like, San Francisco or something? 4000 That's not that bad in LA. Is that, like, Manhattan? Jeez. Straight up join reserve or National Guard and go to RTC, get school paid for. Yeah, refrigerator, I, uh... I, I, I agree that, like, that military service is not widely discussed as a viable path, but there's got to be reasons for that. At least, maybe there are? I don't know anything about that process, so I don't want to sit here and ignorantly say that, like, just, just join the Coast Guard, it's easy, or something. National Guard? Oh, New York? Okay. Yeah, I mean, you could you could get a job somewhere else. That had to hurt. But I think living with your parents and stacking up money while you can is a is a good idea. You shouldn't have to give up your agency as a person to get an education. While I agree, Stay frosty. while I agree, okay. So I think here's the ideal way that the sit that the the. That's so cool. I think here's the ideal way that the, the, the system works. If at 18 we give you like free public education um, and you find a craft or a trade or a skill, if you want to work with your family, like you get to choose. From then on, if you want to work in public service to extend your education and like perhaps open up your, your earning potential and the, the circle of industry you work in, if you want to keep doing that, then okay. Like, you work for two years building roads, or, or working on infrastructure projects, and then we'll pay for your college. Like, that would be sick. Uh, that, that sound, sounds fair to me. Um, I don't know that, I don't know that that's what the situation is like, though. I don't know if it's that clean. I've never really talked to anybody that's used the GI Bill. Uh, or, or gotten a description of the kinds of things you do when you're in, in, in service like that. Um... Like if, if you could, if you could join the military or uh, National Guard or something like that, and like choose like humanitarian missions or something like that, or infrastructure repair, like just do, just do that kind of work. I mean, that should be, that should be good, right? I went to a lower income, non-white high school, and it was 100% highlighted that the military is a good option for most of us as soon as you become an adult. We had recruiting tables on campus, most lunches throughout the year. Yeah, they, they swung through our, our high school, too. Um, 
And I, you know, it was on the table for me, mentally, for a while. Um, it, it really was just like... I think I could have, I think I could have handled that or gone that path. But then I got a scholarship and I was like, sick! I get to shortcut this process a little bit. Active duty means you're a real full member of the military, not reserve or national guard. Yeah, I, I also don't even know the... I do, don't know the distinction between those things. Or how much, um, how much uh, assistance you actually get, whether it's worth it. You know, there's a lot of... A lot of immaterials I <laughs> truly don't don't know. Ah. End of the VIP zone. Hell yeah. Finally. I've made it to the special Twitch after party. Where I am a video game celebrity. Buy me cocktails and feed me sliders. So that I don't tweet mean things about you. Got, like, floating consoles? This is really, really adorable. Got an old Apple II on his arm. Shooting, like, little floppies at you, I guess. Okay, that's his life bar. Yeah, give me free pins! Review copies! Hey, what's up, Grace? Citizens in Legend of Korra legitimize her executive authority as Avatar? Is that a good thing? I haven't gotten a Legend of Korra yet. I've been watching the Twilight Saga, uh, because uh, Prime has the 4K UHD movies. It also has the extended editions, which I might switch over to. Um, but I'm actually like, I'm second guessing that for sure. This Twilight is actually pretty boring. I don't think I actually need more of it. Years of public service for an education replaced the GI Bill. We would see active duty service drop drastically, and the armed forces would have to drastically rethink the recruitment process. The reason we haven't had a draft reinstated is because of the GI Bill and large portions of our mid to lower class. See, it is their only option to escape the current standing in our society. I guess that's an. I never thought about it that way. I guess I assumed uh, we never had a draft because the personnel requirements for uh, conflict have gotten lower. You know, this is this is a very surface level observation, but it always felt to me like if it's one person flying a drone that shoots a missile 100 miles away, you don't really need like 200 pro army bros on the ground kicking in doors and sweeping buildings. But then again, I don't know. That's that's just me knowing absolutely nothing about the military. Like. uh that's that's a Call of Duty's worth of knowledge about what actually happens in the, the armed service. Lesbian Overlord, I like your name. Have you seen the Shivering Truth? I have not. I don't know, man. I uh just from the title, it sounds like a documentary about the reality of of modern armed forces and that sounds like the kind of thing that would depress the hell out of me. But probably worth watching. I like how it crashes back to desktop. That's nice. Oh, can you scroll? No? Oops. Cool! That was fun. Well done. Well played. Well played. Um, 
I guess I didn't get any... Your understanding of the military is very off base. Hey, I'll, I'll admit to that. I have, I have no clue. Uh, I can at least admit that I know nothing about that. Ah, uh, I feel... Hmm. I feel marketed. I feel acknowledged. I feel appreciated. Just exist. Oh, just exited from this from motion sickness. Ah, uh, yeah. There was a lot of screen shake there. There was a lot. I feel like that's one of those things where, for obvious reasons, I think this game didn't go through rigid screening about like accessibility and, and things like that. That drone and missile are very expensive. I, yeah, I guess so. More expensive than living people, probably. It was my, again, limited and inaccurate understanding that you could basically approve any amount of spending as long as you said it would save American soldiers' lives. Okay, I'm gonna... Again, I'm an... I'm an ignorant. Why do I even say these things? There's no reason for that. There's no reason for that at all. Just saying things out of the... That's, like, legitimately out of the ether of my brain. It's just kind of how it feels like sometimes. Okay, uh, I'm gonna play, I think I'm gonna play Shadow Warrior for a little bit. This reminded me how good Shadow Warrior was, so I'm just gonna play through the, like, beginning hours of it here. Alright, uh, I'm gonna get up and walk around, though. Stretch out a little bit. It's hot. <sighs> Let myself air out a little bit. See you guys soon.